in today's video we're going to be checking out just what makes Bitcoin fall, why it's falling so much and how comes Bitcoin is quite so volatile. Now in order to answer those questions we're going to have to take a look at how Bitcoin actually works. But before we get into that here's where we were this time last month. Hi guys and here we are and this isn't just another ordinary rainy day in Manila. Today Bitcoin has actually gone over $14,000. So it only hit $10,000 last week, it's on, on $14,000 already. You might well have noticed that Bitcoin has gone down a little bit lately. In fact it's brought the entire crypto market down with it. Now we're just going to have a little look at just exactly how Bitcoin works and um, what some of the problems are, the flaws in Bitcoin itself, which is why uh, things like Ethereum and NEM etc came out. Now Bitcoin itself works on a process called proof of work and that means you have to work for your Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoins through mining. Okay, and we're going to go into how that actually works. Um, it, it is a bit of a flawed process, which is why Ethereum, uh, that Vitalik Buterin, I think his name is, came out with uh, e Ethereum, which works on proof of stake. And then NEM came out, I think it was 2015, so it's quite a recent one. NEM came out with a new blockchain model based on proof of importance. Now, I really like NEM, I think NEM's a great project. But uh, we're not going to talk about that, we're going to talk about Bitcoin and proof of work. And here we go, this is the Bitcoin blockchain, it is a decentralised ledger technology. Decentralised means that there is no one server, um, centrally owned server where all the information is stored, like one central database. It's on all multiple different computers and as long as one of these computers stays online and stays running, uh, you cannot destroy Bitcoin. So Bitcoin will always be around all the time that there is one mining machine still running Bitcoin. And then as others come on, they just copy the, the database, if you like, it's a ledger of transactions, they just copy it from the one already up and running. Now there are hundreds of thousands of these computers around the world running, even though it costs a fortune in electricity, simply because they get money from mining. Now, in the middle here, we have something called the transaction pool. So every time that you put in a Bitcoin transaction, it goes into the transaction pool. And each of these uh, computers, they will um, start their own block that they hope will be added to the blockchain. And they pull transactions out, out of the pool into their own block. Now, once a computer actually gets it out and then makes some really crazy complicated computer algorithm calculation thing then um, it wins so this one here this, this is one and it's done it the fastest so all the other ledgers that got pulled out those get dropped and all the transactions added back into the transaction pool and this one wins and this block will then get added to the blockchain now, this may be a bit boring, but there's a point to it. It's very slow. Okay, so what happens is all the, all the other machines have to um, copy the winner's blockchain. It is a bit of a slow process, and it's slow on purpose. It's slow for a reason, because what happens if two win simultaneously, and when you have hundreds of thousands of supercomputers super doing this all at the same time around the world, this happens quite a lot. Uh, you have two do it uh, at the same time, which means they go into a sort of um, competition to see who wins the next one. And whoever wins the next one, this chain then gets added to the blockchain and the other one gets dropped. And that is a big problem for the miners. It costs a lot of money to run these machines and a lot of money in hardware. In fact, if you actually have a look at how much this costs, this here is NiceHash, and NiceHash is a piece of software you can download and start mining yourself at home, although you probably don't want to. Now, there's a lot of different um, bits of hardware. I think the best one for if you're doing it at home is a graphics card. It's the NVIDIA 1070, okay? So that will give you the best optimum 
between electricity usage and the actual cost of how much it is. But if you want to, that won't actually do Bitcoin. It will do like maybe some other coins like NEO. But if you want to mine Bitcoin, you're going to need something like a S9 Ant Miner. And with the S9 Ant Miner, it will cost you, for myself, in pounds here in the UK, it's 16 pence per kilowatt. So it's going to cost £155 per month to run the machine on electricity. And the profit per month would be £300. Um, pounds, £300. And if we have a look at how much one of these ant miners costs, here it is. This is the ant miner S9. This is very expensive piece of kit. This actually cost about three thousand pound. It's two thousand eight hundred if you're lucky, and whatever that is in dollars, maybe three and a half, four thousand dollars. It is not a cheap business to get into mining Bitcoin, um, and of course you have to have it running. It's using up all the bandwidth on your internet, so you probably don't want to do it at home. Um, it, it's really a bit of a pain. It's very, very, very expensive which is why they have to add in the transaction fees. So if you remember back on the uh, the Bitcoin blockchain, every time somebody wins some Bitcoin and they mine some Bitcoin, that computer also gets to get paid the transaction fees um, for the transactions that were added to the ledger at that time. So what's happened over the years is the miners have actually asked for more and more money. So the decentralized model allows um, the people to vote in a system, but realistically the only people voting are the miners. So the miners vote that they should be paid more and they're paid more, right? But it's got a little bit out of hand. It's got a bit ridiculous. Here we can see, I think I've showed this on some of my videos before. This is the transaction fees in different cryptocurrencies. XRP is like fractions of a cent. Uh, Bitcoin Cash that has recently come out, that's pretty good. That's just 20, 26 pence per transaction. Litecoin is 37 cents. Dash is 64. And of course, Bitcoin is a whopping $28.23. This is an average transaction fee. Average transaction fee. Now, the average transaction fee back in August 2014, when Bitcoin was about $500, was six cents. Now, if it was the same percentage of the cost of Bitcoin, and we were still paying, that six cents was 0 0.0001 of a Bitcoin. Now, if you were paying that same 0 0.001 of a Bitcoin, that's three zeros in there, point three zeros, you, you would be paying about a dollar nine, a dollar thirty per transaction, would be the average if it was the same as 2014, but it's $28, okay? So the miners have increased their fees substantially, and it's now cheaper to send money through Western Union, right, than it is to send Bitcoin. Bitcoin has priced itself right out the market for sending financial transactions on the internet. It is mega expensive. For me, I, I really don't use it at all. You might as well just use Ethereum, Dash, Litecoin, you know, something else, anything else but Bitcoin. It is stupidly expensive. In fact, this guy here, he is uh, some NFL player. He does a lot in uh, with crypto. He's actually the uh, the spokesperson for Cobin Hood, one of the new exchanges which have just come out. And he says that um, while 4% doesn't seem astronomical at the current price of 14,699 for one Bitcoin, we're talking a nasty surcharge of $587 to send a Bitcoin. That's how much it costs to transact one Bitcoin. And uh, on the average, people are paying around $28 each, just as we saw on the last clip. So, to send $14,000 through Western Union or through the bank, it's obviously a lot cheaper than uh, near $600. It has got crazy out of hand. Bitcoin itself is a finite resource. It does only have 21 million coins which can be mined. And they believe that the last mined coin will be mined in, doo -doo 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 -doo, where is it? It's 2140. Okay, so it's quite a long way to go. We're currently over 16 million coins already mined and existent right now. And uh, by the time it gets to 2140, the last one will be mined. Here's the problem though, 
as we saw on the blockchain model, all these computers that run the blockchain only get paid when they mine Bitcoin. And they're very, very expensive to run these machines to actually power the whole blockchain that Bitcoin runs on. So if these miners, which are paying out a fortune in electricity and the cost of buying the, the equipment, if they're no longer getting paid in Bitcoin and that all they're doing is making the fees, what would you do? You'd turn it off, right? And this is the big fear, you know, when it gets to the end and um, they're either going to have to increase the fees substantially even more and it's going to be even more expensive to send so that you can pay the miners their fees or they're just all going to turn off their computers and uh, the blockchain will be dead. However, despite all of those things, where do I see the price of Bitcoin going in 2018? Well, I'll be honest, um, despite all of that, at the end of the day, you may now know that. I know that and a lot of people in crypto know the flaws with Bitcoin, but the new people coming into cryptocurrency and it is becoming more and more adopted by the masses right now, the new people only really know Bitcoin. It's the only name that they know. So when they first come into cryptocurrencies, they go in to buy Bitcoin. And that is what has kept pumping up the price. Before, back in December, we were seeing record numbers of people coming into cryptocurrencies and those people were buying Bitcoin. That's why Bitcoin went up to nearly $20,000. Obviously, it's had to pull back on the market and it's gone all the way down right under $10, uh, $10, $10,000. It's now back up. I think it's about 11 or 12,000 today. But um, this is a serious problem. I, I can see the um, price of Bitcoin going up maybe like $30,000 to $50,000 this year. But at some point, I believe the, the masses, the people in general around the world will realize how flawed uh, the system is with Bitcoin and just move on to other cryptocurrencies. So um, it's not one which I try and hold too much of. I know a lot of people will say that you want to hold a lot of Bitcoin. And, you know, I'm not saying that that's wrong. You know, but my personal strategy is um, I try and hold just mainly altcoins, uh, the alternative coins, rather than Bitcoin itself. And that is all I have for you today. I hope that made sense. I hope it wasn't too uh, overhead, too <coughs> too overhead, too crazy. Um, but that's it, guys, and I shall see you tomorrow. Whoa, hang on. Any questions um, that you might have? just comment down below and of course don't forget to subscribe to this channel like the video and uh, comment on monday's video for a chance to win this here periodic table of cryptocurrencies with all the latest uh, information on as of january the 1st 2018 it has all the prices and i'm sure i've said this before but i just said it again anyway anyway so there we go uh, i shall see you in tomorrow's video Thank